Hello, tired parents. Welcome to Ask Susanna, round three. Let's get started. The topics that came up this week include how night lights might affect sleep, siblings sharing bedrooms, newborn sleep development, gentle ways to break the nurse sleep associations, night waking, sorry, pardon me, night weaning, reducing nighttime wake ups, which is related, and transitioning from bed sharing to independent sleep. Now, the nightlights question has inspired me to write an article about nightlights, so stay tuned for that. I'll be posting a blog post about that in a couple of days. Um, newborn sleep development. I actually have written an ebook on newborn sleep development, and I will share the details with you about that book in the, um, in the blurb below. Um, and the other questions I've actually, I think I can address by focusing on one question here. I think we can get a little bit out for everybody. This is from Amy Chu who writes, My son is just over two years old. My daughter is seven years old. She has always been an amazing sleeper. Currently, son, dad, and I are co-sleeping, nursing still. He nurses to sleep and sometimes takes two hours to finally get to sleep. It's starting to drive me crazy. He wakes up two to three times a night to nurse. I really want to sleep train him, but I don't know where to start. The kids will have to share a room. I don't want to stop nursing. Thinking of getting a double on double bunk for the kids room and start by putting, the, putting him to sleep there. I'm okay with nursing before bed as, the, as that is how daughter slept. I put her down when she was drowsy and she slept straight through by 18 months. Great. So the points that I want to bring up regarding the questions here, um, which are about breaking the nurse to sleep association, um, changing a kid's sleeping environment from a bed sharing situation to sleeping independently, and with um, uh, sharing a room with a sibling. I won't be able to get too much into the sibling part of this because that's a huge topic in and of itself. But for the other two points, with, um, with breaking the nurse sleep association and transitioning to independent sleep, I'm going to address right now. So there are some gentle ways to break the nurse sleep association. And they can be... So, um, one of my favorites is called The Pantley Pull-Off. It's from Elizabeth Pantley, who wrote a book on child sleep. Just a second. The No Cry Sleep Solution, my discounted version. This method is one where you allow your child to nurse to sleep, but just as they're falling asleep, you pop your finger in, pop them off the breast. Of course, your baby will cry, so then you allow them to nurse again, and once they start falling asleep, pop off again. And you do this over and over and over until your baby has basically tired of the game and falls asleep off the breast. And this can take a few times to try to have success with it, to finally to have broken the association, but it's probably the gentlest um, way of breaking that association, especially with very small babies. With older children, older babies, two-year-olds two uh, two like yours, Amy, um, another technique might be a simple refusal to nurse to sleep, um, a, or it can be combined with the pantley pull-off. And of course, again, you're going to end up with some tears and some upset over this change. And if that is the case, then I would recommend looking into a thing called in-arms crying, which is a method of supporting children through their tears. The theory with it is that tears are a natural expression of uh, upset and upsetting things occur when there are changes or changes are upsetting and tears are a natural response to that change. So in arms crying honors the child's need to cry 
while supporting them in that to create a loving environment around the crying. And I invite you to do a little Googling to look up In Arms Crying. There are some resources online. Um, and finally, if you want to maintain co-sleeping but no longer want to breastfeed, you could have some success by layering yourself so that your breasts aren't exposed and uh, communicating firm boundaries around nursing and following that up with, um, with following through on your words and then of course supporting any of the upset that comes as a result of that new boundary. Um, but yes, if you want to break the nurse to sleep association, you need to ensure that your child no longer falls asleep while nursing. You can get sleepy while nursing, but not fall asleep. Um, now transitioning from a bed sharing to independent sleep, which is sort of called sleep training in this broad umbrella of what sleep training refers to. This transition is a big decision, um, especially when your baby is no longer a little baby, when we have a, when you've got a toddler. It's very doable, but with an older child or an older toddler um, or an older baby, pardon me, it's extra important that you, you communicate very clearly what your new expectations are with your child. So you're going to want to do this verbally and non-verbally and verbally by explaining in age-appropriate language what is going to be happening, what the child can expect, what you expect of the child, how you will be responding to the child, your child, and you will say this at times throughout the day that aren't just bedtime. You may even want to introduce the idea that a change is coming a few days in advance, a day or two in advance, and depending on the personality of your child you can decide whether or not that's a good idea. So that's the verbal communication. The nonverbal communication is following through with your, what you say you're going to do, um, being consistent, you're setting up boundaries, and then you are enforcing those boundaries. Um, and of course, with an older baby, with a toddler, it's very important that when you are making a change like this, to really take into consideration what your child wants and needs. So. Um, toddlers need some autonomy. They need to feel like they're in control of their lives, at least in a small way. We all do, and this is when it, where it starts with toddlers. So as you make this transition, um, in order to be consistent, I would ask you to do a lot of research to figure out the exact method that you want to employ, um, come up with your plan, work out all the kinks, communicate it with any other caregivers, and then communicate it with your child and carry it through confidently and consistently. And that's it for Ask Susanna round three. I'll be posting uh, my next prompt for questions next week and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye, have a good weekend.